All right, so my name is Ryan, and I am given the honor to uh, introduce uh, Peter Lundgren. Peter earned an MA at TESOL from the University of Barcelona, Spain, and a Bachelor of Liberal Arts from Iowa State University. He spent his early career working in the north of Spain in the last 10 years, working at the University of Iowa. Along the way, he had the opportunity to participate in a community garden group, which sparked his interest in the development of green spaces. As a Trees Forever field coordinator, Peter's excited to put his, hand, his interest into practice helping communities plant trees and bring their projects to life. His vision of a climate positive future would be one in which there's a steady and progressive movement toward planting more trees throughout the world, especially here in Iowa. Peter will be uh, presenting on carbon sequestration in Iowa urban forests. Thank you. Take it away, Peter. Thank you. Um, so in talking to Ryan, uh, we were talking about carbon sequestration in urban forests. Um, I'm not an expert in carbon sequestration, and we're not going to really be talking about what is carbon sequestration, but Ryan, what did remind me that um, that topic of carbon sequestration, the idea is that with trees as an urban forest, they are taking carbon out of the atmosphere and storing it um, in the tree. So that's kind of what we're talking about um, for carbon sequestration in urban forests. And we're talking about urban forests in specifically in Iowa um, and a program that we are managing at the moment which has to do with that here in Iowa. So my name is Peter Lundgren and I am the Southeast Iowa Field Coordinator for Trees Forever. Um, this is an organization um, in Marion, and I work for that organization and work in this territory, so that's why I'm in Fairfield. Um, so Trees Forever is a um, nonprofit, 5013C nonprofit organization, and basically our mission is to um, go into small communities and help them sort of reforest their community and plant trees. And that's kind of our sort of main um, mission. So we plant trees and we empower people, build community, and we promote stewardship. Um, so a lot of our stuff that we do is educational outreach, um, which is kind of what I'm doing here today. We are an organization that has planted over 3.4 million trees. We haven't done that personally, but we have um, helped in doing that and helped communities put together projects, bring in volunteers to um, you know, plant those trees. Is Since, that just in Iowa or, um, or all over the The 3.4 million is actually in Iowa. Oh. However, we are starting now to work and we have a bigger mission. We actually want to plant 10 million trees by 2030. We are in the, we are in the process of reevaluating that because um, it was a lofty goal and we are not sure if we are gonna make that, but um, you know, it, it is getting bigger. We are now working in Illinois. Um, so yeah, that's a good question. We've, we've branched out into Illinois. We have field coordinators there and we're also starting to work in Wisconsin. Um, so we have different programs. We are kind of expanding. Um, the organization started in 1989. Shannon Ramsey um, was the original CEO and founder. Um, she has since retired. And she basically saw a need, you know, in small, especially small towns in Iowa that had lost a lot of trees due to different uh, reasons. So deforestation is actually happening or has happened in you know, our own state, right? Um, and we are up to a staff of about 30 now in Iowa and Illinois. Um, as I mentioned, my position is field coordinator, so I'm the one that kind of goes out to the communities uh, promoting our programs. So this is kind of a little outline of what I want to talk about today um, with the idea of carbon sequestration, which is related to one of our projects. Um, we're going to look at urban versus wildland, um, the organization City Forest Credits, the name of our program is LSR Carbon 2124 Program, 
I'll get into that. We'll look at some benefits and drawbacks of carbon sequestration um, through this program. And then a little call to action at the end, like some things that you could possibly do um, you know, to promote this program. And then we'll have some questions at the end. Um, hopefully, time's short. And so I'm going to be going quick. If you guys have any questions, you want to stop me, go ahead. I'm pretty flexible like that. OK, so urban versus wildland. So there's not really a, a comparison. Wildland is much bigger, and it, it, it sequesters carbon much better. However, um, the urban forest has some things that are unique to that, and it's the reason that they're looking at um, this program in an urban setting. So an urban forest it ha it ha is multi-beneficial. So there's multiple benefits to an urban forest, not just sequestering carbon. So for example, an urban forest has um, other environmental benefits like stormwater, um, managing water for, you know, like stormwater retention. So environmental benefits are not just carbon sequestration. Um, there's urban densification. So a lot of people live in an urban setting, so a lot of people are benefiting from urban trees. Um, that's kind of an important aspect of it and why they're looking at you know, the urban forest setting. 80% um, of people live in an urban setting in population, so there's more people benefiting, getting those different benefits from the trees um, rather than just that carbon sequestration. Urban forest management plan is another thing that hopefully looking at trees in an urban forest setting is something that will get better. Um, a lot of urban forest is not managed very well or they don't have a management plan. So um, going into urban forest and trying to help with uh, you know, increasing the tree canopy is going to also help with coming up with uh, an urban forest plan to manage that a little bit better. Um, so that's kind of the difference that they're looking at with urban versus wildland and why they're, this program that I'm going to talk about is focusing specifically on the urban forest. So City Forest Credits is the organization, the, govern, the sort of governing body that is going to be controlling the carbon credits that are given in the urban forest setting. Um, so this study with Klein et al. was carbon trading markets and um, greenhouse gas offset require transparent and verifiable methods to quantify the total carbon sequestration in an urban setting. So what they need is they need a way to really quantify and verify the carbon credits that are happening in an urban setting. And that's where city forest credits comes into play. So they're, in, um, they're setting the standard and the rules and regulations about how the, the credits are going to be sort of quantified and verified. So they have some different protocols that they're setting up um, in order to sort of quantify these carbon credits. So your trees in your urban setting are going to be quantified and the, the amount of carbon credits are going to be verified by this organization. So they're a nonprofit um, registry which is serving the carbon credit market. The protocols that we're looking at, they have two protocols. One is preservation, and that's a 40-year and a 100-year protocol. So for example, if you have a woodland that you preserve over a 40-year period, that's going to have a particular protocol. The one we're talking about today, and the one that we have the program for, is a planting protocol. And that's a 26-year protocol. And so what they're trying to get small towns to do is plant trees and then they will get carbon credits, which then can be sold for monetary benefit for the small town. 
And that's the program that I'll be talking about, that protocol, which is 26 years. So that, the name of that program is LSR Carbon 2124 program because it's 2021 to 2024 is basically what the years that we have the grant for initially. This is a pilot program, so they're, they're trying to see how it works here in Iowa. So it's, it's specific to Iowa at the moment, um, getting these small towns to plant the trees and um, put together this program. So this is the grant that we have at the moment um, to go into different communities. So as I mentioned, this is an urban reforestation and it's specific to small towns that are, well, actually some of the towns are not probably your idea of small. So it is 50,000 population or less. So if it's more than 50,000, we, we're not gonna be going into those communities. It's gonna be specific to those smaller communities. So especially some of the even smaller communities like 5,000, four or 5,000, that population, I'm going into a lot of those communities and promoting this program. Um, it's a 26 year tree planting protocol. So that basically means you commit to 26 years, you need to keep those trees alive for 26 years. Um, they kind of picked 26 years as a number and they're, what they're doing with the carbon credits is they're estimating what the carbon credit amount will be so the carbon that's been sequestered by the tree at year 26. It's an estimation, um, and they're giving out ex ante credits. So they don't know specifically how many credits are gonna be at the 26 year, but they're doing an estimation. So it kind of depends on the type of tree, the tree species that you plant. Um, so their size of tree obviously makes a difference in how much carbon it's storing. Um, so these are things that city forest credits set down as rules. Different types of trees, different species have different amounts of carbon, and that will be calculated in. Um, so they're forecasting that CO2 storage at year 26. Why 26 years? Because once a tree is 26 years old, it's pretty well established and probably will survive on to 50 or 100 years that age mark. Um, but it's trees have certain things that they have to get through in those first few years to make sure that they stay alive. Um, we can talk a little bit about that. So this particular program will have a projected revenue at different um, stages in the life of the tree. So we have year one, four, six, 14, and 26. So at each of those years, there will be a distribution of funds um, which are based on the sale of the carbon credits that were projected for the 26 year mark. Uh, so the community will be receiving money at those different incre increments. Um, the minimum amount of trees that need to be planted in a community are 50 trees. So that's the minimum. And you can either register your trees at one year or you can register them at year three. So it could be a three year or a one year. What is special about this program is that you have small towns. So say you have a town of three or 400 people, for them to plant 50 trees is probably possible, but not many more trees than that. So that smaller amount has to be grouped with other communities to get something that is significant to put on the market to sell as a block. Do you have a question? Yeah, are you guys in Cedar Rapids? Yeah, we're in Cedar Rapids. Okay. Well, actually Marion, which is next to Cedar Rapids. Okay, uh, was that actually the Duratio? I saw that a lot at Cedar Rapids. Duratio Recovery is one of our projects, yeah. yeah. Okay. It's not really re related to the carbon credit program, but uh, because Cedar Rapids is too big to enter into that, um, this initiative is kind of for smaller towns, but that's kind of part of what we do, so. But yeah, planting those, replanting all those trees after the derecho is gonna be very important for um, you know, carbon sequestration, which we'll talk about in a minute, like those benefits. 
I was curious on that chart why the revenues you know go up really high around year four and six, and then they drop way down. Yeah, that's a good question. Um, so basically, that four and six year period are going to be that the sort of that key time when that tree is now established and probably has a good chance of surviving. So giving out a higher percentage at, uh, at those years is basically kind of saying, all right, we know this tree is probably going to make it to 26. Um, so we can give you kind of, you know, the higher percentage of the money. That's kind of the reasoning. Who, who goes back and checks? Because, you know, <laughs> That's you, you my know, job. You check on all those trees. So we'll be looking at a percentage of them. So all the trees have been mapped in the community. And then I will go back in at year one and just um, take a percentage of the trees. So you'll be looking at 10 or 20% of the trees and you'll do an estimation of what is actually still alive. Um, we'll talk about that in a minute. They do have a buffer, but yeah, I'm going back at all those times and checking those trees. So administrative cost? Um, like managing the trees, mulching every year? Like that is something that the community has to do. So hopefully the idea, we're not talking about millions of dollars here. Um, so the amount of money you're getting for doing that initiative, hopefully that's money you can put back into your program and we'll pay for things like mulching and the maintenance. So that's kind of the idea. Like it's not really profit. For us, it's kind of saying, hey, this is a way to encourage you to plant trees and hopefully you can take that revenue that you get and put it back into your tree program. Um, but that's a good pro that's a good question. Um, depending on how management goes, you're still spending more money than you're actually getting out of this. So it's not really paying for that. Does that make sense? Uh, we do offer grants to plant trees. We have different programs. So that's a way that communities can get money to actually pay for the trees. Okay. Um, good. So. The one point you want to make that's clear here is that these communities are grouping together. So you need something like 250, 500, 1,000 trees to be able to go to market with a lump sum. You can't go to a carbon market with five trees. A, a, a company or corporation aren't going to buy those credits. They want to buy a big chunk. And so that's why this initiative is taking these small communities that can only have resources to plant say 50 or 100 trees and putting five or six communities together where they can get up to some decent numbers to get a decent price on the carbon credits. So that's kind of the idea is to group the communities together. Does that make sense? Can, can citizens be part of that? Um, so you can be a part of the initiative and planting and volunteering, but it's the city that's applying for the credits. So all of these trees are on public land. Yeah, um, that's one of the stipulations. So they're not really looking at trees in private homes at the moment. Um, we're hoping that that's gonna come later on uh, because that's also a big chunk of an urban forest. Um, but a lot of it, a lot of our grants and things focus on public land mostly because it has to go through cities. How is this, uh, is this being worked with uh, the cities that are also, are you also trying to encourage people to not take trees out, like when new buildings and properties are being developed and that kind of thing? Is, well, all along the highways. I mean, they're taking so many trees out. And yes. So if you think about this plan, um, this is one initiative to kind of encourage a town to plant trees and also take care and manage them. And in that process, uh, one of the things they, the city can start doing is creating a tree ordinance and a management plan, and then they can start addressing some of the issues you're talking about so that they are planting 
the right trees in the right places and they're taking care of the trees. So hopefully this is, when we get to benefits, that's kind of hopefully one of the benefits here is to help a city create these management plans so that they're not losing trees, that they're taking care of trees. If you have a tree registered in your carbon credit program, yeah, at year 14, you don't wanna take that tree out because you're gonna to have to give that money back. So a, a city is gonna be more inclined to not take that tree out. So we're hoping that that's kind of gonna help with that, what you're talking about. But yeah, that's a problem. So benefits and drawbacks, benefits to this program. Obviously, if we're planting more trees, we're storing more, the trees are storing more carbon, and so that's good for the environment because we're keeping that carbon out of the atmosphere. Um, and the more trees we plant, the more we can offset that carbon. So that's an obvious benefit. Um, reforestation, we need more trees. We've lost a lot of trees, so if this can encourage towns to plant more trees, then that's going to be a good thing. That's going to be a benefit. Um, maybe another incentive to help them you know, do that. And that's why they're looking at these urban forests, because they want to increase that incentive. Um, and there's lots of community benefits, like health, um, environment, like I talked about before. There's economic benefits. Um, all of those studies have been done to show that trees have lots of different benefits for us as you know, community members, not just carbon sequestration, especially in an urban setting. So trees are good in that respect. Some drawbacks, there's greenwashing. Some, criti some criticisms are that you know, a, a company, a corporation, or a business will buy carbon credits so that they don't have to you know, they can offset their carbon footprint and get benefits for doing that, but without actually making any changes to their, you know, their processes or procedures. And so people are saying this is just a way of buying your way out of you know, making any kind of substantial environmental uh, you know, changes in the way you do things. So that's one criticism or drawback. Um, allocation is one that for example, if you have a community here who plants trees and gets the benefits from the community, and then you have another community in another state that has a factory where they're getting the pollution and, the, and they're buying the credit so that they can keep you know, doing what they're doing, that community gets the bad part of it, this community gets the good part of it. So there's kind of a misrepresentation of where the benefits go. Um, that's often a criticism. My answer to that is let's encourage the business in this town to buy the credits that you're producing. And so you keep it in the same community um, and get both the benefits, you know, it stays in that same community. So that could be an answer to that. And lastly was that thing we were talking about, the management. Um, a lot of times trees in an urban setting are not managed very well. So there is a high mortality rate for trees. Um, interestingly enough, the average lifespan of a tree in an urban setting is eight years. Now, that doesn't mean that trees are just dying at eight years. That has to do with a lot of things like how they're taken care of. Um, you know, cities are always making repairs and adjustments and renovations, so they often take trees out. Um, trees are often planted in bad places or not planted very well. Um, wrong tree, wrong place, that kind of stuff. But yeah, it surprised me a lot to hear that the average lifespan of a tree is eight years in an urban setting. So that's not a very good thing for carbon sequestration, obviously, because we need trees to live 40, 50, 100 years. Who can I ask a couple of questions? Okay, Yeah, we're kind of right out of time. Um, well, that call to action, so what can you guys do um, as an individual in a town you can advocate with your city, talk to your city, see if what they're doing about, you know, planting trees. Do they have any, you know, are they actively looking for grants? Are they actively planting? Um, you mentioned putting together some kind of management plan, tree ordinance, change that. 
volunteerism. You can volunteer with different organizations in town. If you know a nonprofit organization, they can apply for some of our grants. As an individual, you can um, you know, bring some of that money into town. Uh, we'd love to work with you. Get in touch with me, uh, especially if you live in a small town or here in Fairfield, get in touch with me and we can bring grant money down. And lastly, start a tree committee in your town. This is one of the best ways to um, really advocate for trees in your town, set up a tree committee. Washington is a town where they have an excellent tree committee, a group that's been going for 30 years, and they've gotten so much done. Just takes a couple of like-minded people. And that brings us to questions, and if you have do, do you want to reach out to me? I'll be, I have my stand over here, I have cards, um, lots of material, and you can always reach out to me and do stuff. I have a question. Yes. How did you get into the tree business? What's your background? My background actually is education. Um, so that kind of works right here. Okay. But um, I saw that Trees Forever were looking for field coordinators, and, and I thought that would be a really interesting thing. I really like going into small towns. I like, I'm a people person. I like talking to people. And, you know, it just, that just attracted me. And we do have an arbor committee in Fairfield. We have one. Okay. And they've been going for a while, as far as I know. Um, let's see, I have another question. Uh, so you talk about the average life of a tree in the urban setting is eight years. I think a lot of that has to do with planted in one place where you're planted, and then there's pipes under, there's no dirt. Yep, that's true. Exactly. So there are species of trees that will work in that setting, and that's getting the right tree in the right place. So you can still have a tree, for example, downtown in your main street where you have businesses. It's, it's um, economically viable to put trees there because that attracts customers. They spend more time shopping, so business owners should be on top of that. And it just makes for a more pleasant community to have trees, but you have to put the right kind of tree. So you go for a smaller variety, something that is going to thrive in, um, you know, yeah, exactly. Anybody else have a question? Yes. That's a good question. Um, there is some controversy in that. Um, I, I went to a talk. Um, last month at Iowa State University, and there was a woman who advocated um, that you don't always have to plant native, that non-native is, uh, is sometimes um, a better option, especially when you're looking at, um, you know, certain, in, you were talking about putting a tree in, 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 in a situation where it's not the most ideal conditions, it's not native. If you look at trees in an urban setting, they're not in a native environment. So planting a native tree might not survive there. Planting a non-native species might. For example, a ginkgo tree um, is not really a native tree to Iowa, but it does thrive well in certain conditions. It's very temperature resistant. So they do often plant them in downtown settings where there's lots of heat. Um, so there are some options where non-native is a good choice. However, we do mostly promote native trees. Yes. Well, just a comment, we had an 80, 100 year old oak tree and there was one of those October ice storms. The leaves were still on the tree, but it filled up with ice, so this huge branch ripped right off. Yes. When it came down, it took one below that and one below that. The whole tree ended up on one side over the house. Oh. Not safe. So several thousand dollars later we had to take that trip. Yeah. But it left a huge open space which was shaded. So we're putting in some fruit trees and an orchard and yep. getting able to garden a little more. And now with the local support for the non native the native, you know there's a lot going on here. There's yes. Here. So we're moving in that direction. That's um, good. But I saw your table. I didn't know you were in here. I was at your table. You have some really good information. Yeah, there's some great stuff there. And it's all free. Hey, I'm the popular guy when I have free stuff. I'm, I'm curious, interested because we're new at this. We don't have generations of, of uh, knowledge, you know, passed on like, like Paul and Leopold, you know. That. Yeah. So we're all starting from scratch. But your service is really helpful. Yeah. 
reach out to me. Um, we love to go in. I'm doing lots of different work in different towns. We go in and do workshops. Um, you know, so I'm always willing to come out. That's the fun part. Do you do a, you. a consultation for like a landscape design? Where, where some yes. trees might, could you help us out now? I can. Come to my table and we'll talk about that, okay? I think Thank I'm running. Thank you very much. Thank you, Alex. I'm welcome now.